It's a beautiful day for baseball. And live from Salt River Field on the outskirts of Scottsdale, Arizona, Sportsnet LA presents the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Colorado Rockies as the Dodgers getting ready to play their 12th exhibition game of the young season. Hi again, everybody. Charlie Steiner, Rick Bundy. A couple of pieces of good news from the Dodgers injury list. Corey Seager, the knee, still a problem, but no surgery, not likely to be on the disabled list for opening day. There was some consideration of that just 24 hours ago. They expect him to resume full baseball activities in about 10 days to two weeks. JT, Justin Turner, thought to be merely a DH tomorrow. In fact, will play four or five innings. The expectation he'll be good to go on opening day. Good to go this Sunday afternoon. Clayton Kershaw making his third start of the spring. If we're looking at the left-hander, not only, I mean, if you're Dave Roberts, the manager, or Rick Cunningham, the pitching coach, and Clayton Kershaw comes in and says, look, by the way, I want to extend it to five innings, which he said today, and forget the designated hitter I want to hit. Are you going to say no? Well, he's going to not only go five innings, depending upon the pitch count, but he's going to bat, which I think is a very good thing. He understands he can help himself. He wants to get ready for it, so he's going to not only pitch and go to five, he will bat in the number nine spot. I would look for him today to maybe start throwing the curveball a little bit more. He's shown it maybe not as consistent as what we normally see with Clayton Kershaw, but it's going to be interesting. I think he's going to work on a lot of things today. And one of the things we have noticed, and you certainly pointed out last night, the aggressive posture the Dodgers have taken on the base pads. And it was the message that Dave Roberts delivered to his team, Charlie, the very first day when they had the team meeting. They said, look, we need to improve in the base running. Yesterday, last night, in the second inning, anticipating Chase Utley at third base. We'll get another look. Now watch the secondary lead. He sees it, he anticipates it, and it was a big run at the time. The same inning. Austin Barnes now is the runner at third base. Anticipating, sees it, reads it very well. These are the things, and I talked to Dave in his office earlier this morning, right before we left to come over to the stadium. He said, look, he was really happy with the way that things happened. He was about to go in and have a team meeting. He said, one of the first things I'm going to say is keep the aggressiveness, just as we saw last night, we just showed you, that took place in last night's game. I love the way they're running the bases now. And one of the interesting young players of the spring so far, Cody Bellinger, once again going to be starting at first base today. He's hitting over 400, and he's really made quite an impression. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have the lineups and first pitch. It's the Dodgers and Colorado Rockies on this beautiful Sunday afternoon on the outskirts of Scottsdale.
game of the spring. Clayton Kershaw getting ready for his third start. A look ahead of the Dodgers' schedule this week. Got the Brewers on Monday and the White Sox on Tuesday. Of course, the Dodgers and the White Sox share the facility over at Glendale. So, categorically, it is a road game, but so be it. The Rockies again on Wednesday. The Royals on Thursday. Friday, back here at Talking Stick. And then on Saturday afternoon, back on television, the Dodgers and the White Sox. In the meantime, we're getting ready for the lineups in the first pitch. It's the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Colorado Rockies coming up next. Pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game next. Fields at Talking Stick in the northeastern part of Scottsdale, Arizona, on an absolutely drop dead gorgeous day. There are clouds way off into the distance, but for the Dodgers, a record so far seven wins, two losses, and a couple of ties so far in spring training. The Dodgers are moving uh, across the uh, Valley of the Sun, and they will take on the Rockies here this afternoon. Clayton Kershaw not only slated to go five innings. Said he wanted to hit. So Dave Roberts has him uh, not only on the mound, but he will bat ninth. And uh, the Dodgers will not use the designated hitter in the outset of this ball game. Absolutely glorious weather. There's uh, not a breath of wind to be spoken of. It looks like a sellout crowd. And for the Dodgers and the, uh, the Rockies here, the Rockies share this complex along with the Arizona Diamondbacks 76 degrees at game time and it's going to be Jock Peterson leading things off he'll be in center field Chase Hudley back in the second base position Andre Ethier will be in left Scott Van Slyke is in right field at shortstop Kiki Hernandez AJ Ellis will do the catching at first base Cody Bellinger Charlie Culberson has been uh, fantastic defensively will be at third base this afternoon and Clayton Kershaw on the mound and he will bat in the number nine position the umpire and crew Ted Barrett is going to work the plate this afternoon to call the balls and strikes and around the bases and they will change positions as the game goes on Jim Wolf Ryan Blackney and then Chris Siegel as well the Rockies taking the field here and for Colorado it's going to be Charlie Blackman in center the designated hitter they'll use Ryan Rayburn Nolan Arenado with a monstrous season last year will be at third base. Carlos Gonzalez moving back over to right field. 
at first base Mark Reynolds who just joins the Rockies. Roderick Parham will be in left DJ LeMayhew. A first time all star last year will be at second base Nick Hundley will catching. Christian Adamas will be at shortstop and Jordan Lyles the big right hander getting the start and for Lyles his problem over the last couple of years has been both hand and foot injuries. And for the Rockies as we have talked about on the radio side a major league high earned run average in their starting pitchers their bullpen a major league high earned run average and the staff on top of it issued the most walks in major league baseball last year almost 580 so there is room for improvement in that category so it's going to be Lyles against Kershaw here in this afternoon's contest I guess, uh, tomorrow We'll be back at Camelback Ranch against the Milwaukee Brewers. And a glorious afternoon to be working here as the Dodgers and Salt River Fields at Talking Stick. And this complex underway, as I mentioned before, looks like a sellout crowd. They are packed in, enjoying the sunshine. And for the play this afternoon's game, we turn it over to Charlie. It'll be the third consecutive sellout for the Dodgers. Of course, they sold out on Friday afternoon against the Angels back in Glendale last night against the Cubs. And here about a 45-minute drive from Glendale. They're packed to the rafters for the Dodgers and the Rockies. Last year, the Dodgers 11-8 and eight against Colorado. It's remarkable. Since 2000, the Dodgers are 50 games over 500 against the Rockies 171 121 Jock Peterson leads it off and takes a call strike and it's nothing and one Peterson with a home run 267 on the young spring season four for 15 but he has been struck out seven times Lyles delivers a breaking ball high that is one ball and one strike Chase Utley on deck and Andre Ethier will follow now into the wine, Lyles deals. Swing and a miss. As it was an awkward swing, Peterson steps out of the batter's box and kicks his bat. In Many frustration. Parts in that swing we started early. Yes, the late kick has been reduced. We've talked about it, talked about it again yesterday. The shift is on. The pitch is on the way. Swung on and missed strike three. So Peterson down on strikes and we're underway. Now Chase Utley stepping in. Utley's hit the ball solidly in the first couple of weeks. He's five for 15. A double, a triple, and a run batted in. You know, the Dodgers projected opening day infield of Gonzalez, Kendrick, Seeger, and Turner have yet to play an inning together. So Utley will be going back and forth between second and third this year. A wild pitch goes to the backstop. One ball, no strikes to Chase Utley. Rockies also putting a shift on with a veteran left-handed hitting in Utley. Ethier is on deck, so the first three hitters today. Peterson, Utley, and Ethier, all southpaws. Lyles deals. Strike on the outside corner. That is one ball and one strike. A picture-perfect 76 degrees, as Bo mentioned nary a breeze. It couldn't be a more lovely day on this Sunday afternoon. Now Utley pops it off to the left and out of play. Defensively for the Rockies, Nolan Arenado at third base. Christian Adamas is the shortstop and he's shaded toward the first base side of second. With DJ LeMahieu, the all-star second baseman. His heels on the outfield grass. Mark Reynolds now in the journeyman category is at first. And Ben Paulson expected to see some time over there this year for Walt Watts. Now Utley swings and fouls it back. The count remains at one and two. Yeah, for Lyles, we mentioned the fact hand and foot injuries. Uh, the one thing that really helped him last year in the limited time that he was pitching. The split finger, not the fastball, but it was a split finger changeup that he was able to throw. They're just kind of uh, not only the, the off velocity, but it just dropped in altitude as it got near home plate. He's 6'4", 230, big right-hander, 25 years of age, delivers under the knees to uh, Utley in the dirt, and the count is 2-2. Two and two. 
And a breakdown for the Lyles. Fastball last year, about 33% of the time. The sinker, the changeup. That was about 8% of the time. A slider to go with it and a curveball. Question is, is it too many different pitches? Two and two to Utley. The pitch on the way. Hung on and missed strike three as the bat flies out of Utley's hand and finally rests somewhere between first and second base. Utley down on strikes. There's two out. Yeah, there's the changeup and uh, the hitter's just down in front of it. I, I mentioned yesterday, one of the things that hitters and you're trying to get is pitch recognition in the early going. That was a dandy changeup which is a field pitch. And you throw that ball early in spring training, you indeed have a good feel of what you're throwing. Had surgery on his left big toe. The year before, he broke his left hand. Ethier on the first pitch, grounds one to second base. It's backhanded by LeMayu, throws across his body. Ethier is retired and the Dodgers go quietly. Nothing across. Clayton Kershaw making his third start of the spring, getting ready for a sixth opening day start when we come back. And at the end of the week, beginning his eighth big league season, getting ready for his sixth consecutive opening day start. Kershaw in 2015, 16 and 7, a 2.13 ERA, 301 strikeouts in 232 and two thirds innings. He'll be facing Charlie Blackman to be followed by Ryan Rayburn and Nolan Arenado. Cargo is in the cleanup spot. Mark Reynolds batting fifth. Gerardo Parra, the Dodgers have seen him plenty over the years. Now with the Rockies. DJ LeMayhew at second base. Nick Hundley, the catcher. And Christian Adamas is the shortstop. Walt Weiss presiding over a, a team that finished last year 68 and 94. The left handed hitting Blackman, a solid, speedy center fielder, takes a, a strike and it's nothing in one. Kershaw into the wine, and here's the pitch. Foul off to the left and out of play into the Dodger dugout. That scatters him. And it's nothing in two. And Kershaw draws a big crowd, not just in the stands. I watched him as he was warming up in the bullpen down the left field line today. There were 17 uniformed Dodger personnel watching every move as he warmed up for the game. Now Blackman takes high. I'm talking players. I'm talking uh, some of them are pitchers, coaches. And it was interesting also, there was another youngster that was called up today was watching. There's a line drive base hit in the right center field for the speedy Blackman. Takes the turn at first. Gathered by Van Slyke in right. Blackman is held to a single, and Blackman is aboard. Dodgers, uh, in fact, uh, they called up a couple other uh, minor league uh, players to, to fill in the roster. And one of them is wearing number 97. We may see him later on at infielder Max George. 
and he was down there watching and talking to, to some of the other Dodger pitchers and some of the coaches. But they watched every move that Kershaw made, and these are his own people. They're always looking as it what sets this guy head and shoulders above most others. Ryan Rayburn is the hitter, and he takes a strike, and it's nothing in one. Just underway, the Dodgers were retired in order in the first inning by Jordan Lyles. Dodgers 11 and 8 against the Rockies last year, 7 and 3 at Dodger Stadium, 4 and 5 in Colorado. There's a knee buckling breaking ball, and it's 1 and 1 under the knees to Rayburn with Nolan Arenado on deck. Yeah, Rayburn had been mostly with the Tigers, last year was with the Indians. Into the last two years with Cleveland. Serving as the designated hitter this afternoon and a pickoff at first base. Blackman leaning the wrong way. Kershaw the flip throw and Bellinger with the slap tag. Well, I believe the number was 10 at pickoffs last year by Kershaw all around. And a good snappy tag also by Bellinger. He's on the upper back. That was not a come set and then deliver over. That was a come set, break the hand, step off of the left foot, and throw over. And now the pitch to Raber. Swing and a miss. And it's one ball, two strikes. Although that sequence, you step off first, then break the hands. Otherwise, it's a balk. Well, we talked about it when he first came up Kershaw. And that was back in 2008. Fastball missing just outside. Two balls, two strikes. He didn't have much of a pickoff move when he first came up because in high school, nobody ever got on base against him. And they dare not run against him. And so in his first year or so, it was a question of mastering a new craft. Rayburn fouls it off to the left and out of play. And now he's got among the best pickoff moves in the game. Clubs have tried to figure out for Kershaw once he comes set. There is a forward lean that he has. He's been called for a balk, that forward lean, and then throwing over most of the time, but you get most clubs, most base runners, have not figured him out yet. Now the 2-2, Rayburn takes low and outside, 3-2. and two. A.J. Ellis behind the plate today. Cody Bellinger at first, Chase Utley at second, Kike Hernandez at short, and Charlie Culberson, the one-time Rocky at third. Andre Ethier is in left, Jock Peterson in center, and Scott Van Slyke in right. And now the 3-2, rounded to the third, and a diving stop by Culberson. Picks it up, throws him out, and at the other end, Bellinger digs out the short hop. Some snappy defense from the corners. And we continue to see Culberson. A couple of games ago, going to his right, knocked it down, and got it. Went to his left, knocked it down, and got it. Goes to his right here, and then on the backside, Boy, just a very easily done low backhanded scoop by Bellinger, who's been most impressive with the glove we've seen him so far. And he can hit two. Now Nolan Arenado, talk about impressive with the glove. Arenado, beginning his fourth big league season, he's already the three-time Gold Glove Award winner. 40 home runs and 130 runs knocked in last year. Arenado, one of the game's elite players now. Takes high and outside, one ball and no strikes. Kershaw delivers in the dirt. And it's 2-0. Oh. Arenado, 89 extra base hits. Now that's an all-time record in Major League Baseball history for third base. 42 home runs, 43 doubles, and four triples. Now the pitch on the way from Kershaw. A line drive base hit into left field. Arenado, by the way, has been tearing the cover off the ball this spring as well. So he's got the two out single to left. Arenado this spring with that base hit is now 11 for 19. And he will not, well, he's going to turn 25 in April, but uh, he has accomplished a great deal in a very short period of time. Defensively, they're Maybe some third baseman as good as he is, but few, if any, are better. Carlos Gonzalez steps in. Now, if Gonzalez could only stay healthy, 271 last year with 40 home runs, 97 RBIs. Well hit to left center field, and a diving catch made by Jock Peterson. The 
ball slicing away off the left-handed bat of Carlos Gonzalez. And Peterson, terrific defender, makes a diving play to end the inning. No runs, two hits, one man left. No score after one inning of play. catch robbing Carlos Gonzalez of an extra base hit to end the first inning jock gold glove caliber center fielder Scott Van Slyke will lead it off Van Slyke a good spring to this point eight hits in 19 at bats takes a call strike and it's nothing in one it'll be Van Slyke Kike Hernandez and AJ Ellis to bat And Slyke, right-handed hitter, deep in the box, open stance, takes under the knees. That is one and one. Open stance, the leg kick, as he uh, really moves that stride back towards the pitcher. Now the one-one, outside and low, two balls and a strike. The veteran Ted Barrett calling balls and strikes. Once an amateur boxer. Jim Wolf. Randy's older brother. Randy finally announced his retirement. Now the pitch to Van Slyke. Pop foul off to the right and out of play. Ryan Blackney is the second base umpire. Chris Siegel at third. And the field umpires will move around, get different angles during spring training from one base to the next. It's spring training for them too. Van Slyke with a couple of home runs this spring. Takes a ball under the knees. the pregame. You were late. You better get a note from home. Here's the pitch. Van Slyke with a fly ball to left field. It's deep. It's on its way and it is gone. Scott Van Slyke with his third home run of the year. A mammoth blast. It lands on the berm oh, about 20 feet beyond the left field wall. Very distinct sound. On a picture perfect swing. For Van Slyke, when he gets a hold of it, he's able to maximize the leverage. He had no doubt where this one was going. Left fielder Gerardo Parra, two time gold glove winner, just made one false move toward the left field wall and watched it leave the park. Kike Hernandez stepping in. Hernandez. 18 this spring takes inside. Well, Kike is, is healthy now, had the shoulder surgery. They held him out from a playing standpoint for a while. He was still hitting. There was 
Nothing uh, constricting in the, the swing. He swings and fouls it back. And it's two and one. Ike Hernandez last year played a, a pivotal part of this Dodger ball club. He first came up, you wonder, so well, okay, what role is he going to play? And then with the injuries, we found out exactly. Utility man, Deluxe, could play everywhere and did a very good job offensively on top of it. And filling in at shortstop for the moment with Seeger out. Here is a call strike. We're mentioning about the pregame and how the Dodgers got much better news from the medical office today than they had just 24 hours ago, Corey Seeger. So they're going to shut him down basically for a week, and then in a couple of weeks they'll get him back playing and getting at bats, and the hope and expectation is he'll be in the opening day starting lineup. Dave Roberts also announcing today that Justin Turner, instead of DHing tomorrow, will play four or five innings at third base, coming off the microfracture surgery on his left knee. Two and two to Hernandez. Dodgers one to nothing. And Kike with a ground ball to second base where D.J. LeMayhew, a couple of steps to his left, picks it up and throws him out. So Hernandez will be starting it short of Fairmouth while Seeger is gone. And Charlie Culberson, we talked about him starting at third base today, made two terrific plays at short the other day. One deep in the hole and then one behind second base. A couple of diving stabs. Culberson has really had a terrific spring. A.J. Ellis stepping in. Ellis is 5 for 16. Lyles delivers outside and low. One ball and no strikes. That's the thing with Culberson, what we've seen so far, he has to be leading the Dodgers in cleaning bills. His uniform has been dirty just about every game he's played in. He's been fun to watch. one nothing Dodgers as Ellis takes a strike. One ball, one strike. AJ 238 last year, 241 career hitter takes a strike. That is one and two. AJ will turn 35 next month. He's up there in Wisconsin in the offseason, and he loops a line drive base hit in the center field. So the Dodgers with the home run by Van Slyke. Hernandez bounces out, and now Ellis with a clean single to center as Cody Bellinger steps in. Everybody's been talking about Cody, who had 30 home runs at Rancho last year. And is hitting 429 this spring, 6 for 14. Lift and drive hitter has a slight uppercut. Holds his hands high to begin with and brings him down to the top of the strike zone. The question is going to be that fastball that is up in the strike zone. Takes under the knees, one ball, no strikes. All six of his hits this spring have been singles. So Bellinger is certainly a, a prospect on the rise. Takes a strike on the outside corner, one and one. The Bellinger is able to drive uh, and get really good power using his legs. Does not have a, a big stride. That's a good thing. Starts with an open stance, slightly open, and deep in the box. 6'4, 213. Takes inside, two and one. Yeah, his stride is not even six inches. So that's going to help him, but. He's got a lot of power, and now contact is the next thing to work on at consistency. Bellinger grew up here in Arizona, lives in Scottsdale. The 2-1, outside and low, 3-1. and one. And you may remember his dad, Clay Bellinger, has a couple of World Series rings with the Yankees in 99 and 2000. Charlie Culberson is on deck. Three and one. Line drive, base hit left field. Ellis rounding second on his way to third. And Bellinger is on his way to second base with a sliding double. So the Dodgers are in business with second and third and one man out. Bellinger's first extra base hit of the spring, and it brings up Charlie Culberson. 
Just went with the pitch, not over striding, goes the opposite way. The other thing that we really see with Bellinger, really for the first time, is that he runs pretty well for a big guy. Bellinger, a fourth round pick back in 2013. Now here's Charlie Culberson. Certainly has a chance to make the roster as a utility player. He can play second, short, and third, and he's played an outstanding shortstop to this point, playing third base today. Second and third, one man out, and he takes a strike, nothing in one. He's also got seven hits and 18 at-bats. A ground ball can get you a run unless it's hit directly back to the pitcher or if it's hit to a rocket at first to third. And now the infield's going to come in. They're going to choke off. Initially, the first pitch, they were back at second and short. And now they're pinched in. The pitch, Culberson, big rip, fouls it back. Nothing and two to Culberson with Clayton Kershaw on deck. Rockies know Culberson well. Played with him in 2013 and 14. Now the 0 2 with second and third, one out. Swung on and missed strike three, pitch in the dirt. Dropped by Nick Hundley. He throws to vacant first base to complete the strikeout, the third for Lyles, the second out of the inning. We said it in the past and kind of stick to it. On the days that Kershaw plays and pitches, he's probably the best baseball player on the field. He just happens to be the pitcher. Right now he's trying to be the best hitter on the field. Ain't too bad at that either. As he takes low and outside, one ball, no strikes. He'll turn 29 later in the week. Three hundred and one strikeouts last year as a pitcher. Three hundred and one strikeouts as a hitter wouldn't be too good. Dodgers with a one to nothing lead on the Van Slyke leadoff home run in the second. Ellis single, Bellinger doubled, second and third, two out. Outfield straight away. Pitch to Kershaw is low and outside. Three balls and no strikes. Jock Peterson on deck. Kershaw has one career home run. It's opening day a couple of years back. Takes a four pitch walk to load the bases. Peterson coming up. Got to pitch carefully to a guy that says, no, I don't I don't want the designated hitter. I want to be able to, uh, to bat. Takes four wide ones. Go figure. And now pitching coach Steve Foster is coming out. Boy, it is tough being the pitching coach of the worst pitching staff in baseball. Yeah, they're going to get action. Major League High, 5.27 ERA in their starting staff, the second highest number in the last 10 years by any pitching staff. The bullpen, Major League High, 4.70 earned run average. The most walks also in the bullpen, out of the bullpen, in the majors. And the staff issued the most walks in the majors, 579 uncontested free passes. Can't win if you can't get the other guys nope. out. And so here is Peterson with the bases loaded and the offense or the outfield is deep. Here's the pitch. High, one ball, no strikes. Lyles made but 10 starts last year. A ligament in his left big toe needed repair. 
Peterson checks his swing, just gets a piece of it, fouls it to the left. That is one and one. Chuck right now is just really struggling picking up the ball. Not only had he started way too early on the swing, could not stop it. It's a check swing. And then he turns and asks the umpire, was it a strike? So for for Jock, the, the first thing, well, there's a couple firsts he's got to do, but the biggest thing is reestablish the strike zone. Remember last year? I said I have not seen a young player had a better knowledge of the outside corner than, than Jock. That was the first two months. Peterson lines a base hit into center field. Ellis will score. Bellinger, who runs well, will come home without a throw. A two RBI, two out single for Jock Peterson. Dodgers take a 3-0 lead. And maybe that will get Jock going. He just has not looked comfortable, and he hasn't looked like he's had the confidence in trying to rearrange the swing, a little different approach to it. The leg kick has been altered. Uh, the balance has been altered at various times. Now you come up with a big base hit. It's a feel-good situation. It helps you to buy into the overall program. Sam Mole, M-O-L-L, Mole, is warming up in the Rocky bullpen. He's a lefty. Kershaw holds at second base on the RBI single, the two RBI single for Peterson. Dodgers up three zip as Chase Utley steps in. Utley struck out at his first at bat. Well, the Dodger offense has been firing on all cylinders the first couple of weeks. As Utley takes a call strike, nothing in one. Second in the National League with a 3.05 batting average and leading the National League in spring training with a 3.75 on base percentage. And a 3 nothing lead with two out and two on here in the second inning. 0 and 1 to Utley. Who loops one into short left field and Gerardo Parra makes a diving catch. The two time gold glove winner. An outstanding play. Utley is retired. So are the Dodgers, but not before they score three. Three runs and four hits to men left. Go to the bottom of the second. Dodgers 3 0. Prone Mark Reynolds will lead it off for the Rockies in the bottom of the second inning. Reynolds came up with the Diamondbacks in 2007 and on to Baltimore, Cleveland, the Yankees, the Brewers, last year with the Cardinals. He's a career 230 hitter, 237 career home runs, but has been struck out 1,519 times. And a fly ball into left field, shading his eyes, making the catch, is Andre Ethier. One pitch, one out here in the second. Ethier. 
1,517 strikeouts. Well, we talked about it last year. After the 2009 season, okay, we're in spring training, driving around the Valley of the Sun, had the radio on, and I'm listening to an interview, and Mark Reynolds is on the interview. Gerardo Parr is the hitter, takes a strike, and it's nothing and one. Now, Reynolds that year before 2009 struck out 223 times. And a question was asked. Now, Parr squares the butt and misses, and it's nothing and two. The question is asked. With that many strikeouts at 200 the year before, have you thought about changing anything at all to make more contact? And his answer? I know it too far a thousand back. No, I'm not going to change a thing. <laughs> and I almost drove off the road. Well, he did improve the next year. He struck out only 211 times, but he played 10 less, 10 fewer games than he had the year before. So it was a push. But he said, no, I'm not going to change a thing. On 0 and 2, Farra swings and misses. And that is Kershaw's first strikeout. Like a hard biting slider down and away. I remember you telling me the story. We we're, were doing a road game. I don't know if it's playing Texas or something. And we're bringing our roller bags up toward the press box. You told me about that. And the steam was still coming out of here. I, I, I could not believe it. I made an illegal lane change <laughs> immediately. Are you kidding? Are you? Yeah. D.J. LeMayhew with a chopper to third. Nice, easy hop for Culberson. Spins, throws, and a nice, easy inning for Clayton Kershaw. Nothing across. We'll go to the third. Kershaw and the Dodgers lead 3-0. <laughs> Friday night, April 15th, when the Dodgers host the Giants at 7:10, And the first 40,000 fans in attendance receive an adult replica Jackie Robinson jersey presented by Bank of America. Visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. So we'll go to the top half of the third inning. And the Dodgers will be sending up Andre Ethier, Scott Van Slyke, and Kike Hernandez. So far, so good in the third start for Kershaw. Through two innings, just 21 pitches, 15 for strikes. No runs, two hits, and a strikeout. Ethier is now essentially your starting everyday left fielder. And so far this spring, he is 6 out of 15. Of course, born and raised in the Valley of the Sun. He swings and fouls it back, and it's nothing in one. Last week, Dave Roberts essentially said to uh, Carl Crawford, Ethier, because of his time here, and what he has done is earned that right. What was interesting and, and, and most pleasing to 
Dave Roberts as Lyles misses high and outside, one ball, one strike, was the reaction from Crawford. He said, you know, you're right. I've just got to earn my way back into your good graces and confidence and do it on the field. 1-1, one, one. Ethier takes high and outside, 2-1. and one. Van Slyke and Hernandez to bat next here in the third. Dodgers three runs and four hits. The Rockies no runs and two. Jordan Lyles into the wind and Ethier takes under the knees. And it's now three and one. Rockies have the shift on, but the outfield is straight away. Only Arenado on the left side of the infield. Lyles on three and one to Ethier. Line drive, base hit headed toward the right field corner. That was a scorcher. Ethier is on his way to second. Ethier is on his way to third, and he is going to make it. A sliding leadoff triple for Andre Ethier here in the third inning. He scorched it. Just a great swing hit into that corner. Carlos Gonzalez was playing a country mile off the foul line to begin with. Had a long run to come over in the corner and get the ball. And it rattled around. Ethier picked it up. Did not pick up. Didn't really have to pick up. Chris Woodward, the third base coach, until after he gone around the second base bag, he saw clearly that there was no chance at all that Gonzalez could throw him out. Infield playing back. Arenado even with the bag just to keep Ethier a little closer at third as Van Slyke takes low and inside. One ball and no strikes. So for Ethier, his seventh hit of the spring, first extra base hit, a triple. Got his money's worth on that swing, as Van Slyke did on his in his first at-bat, a home run. For Van Slyke, his third home run of the spring, and he takes a breaking ball for a strike. One ball, one strike, nobody out, top of the third, Dodgers three, and the Rockies nothing. Kike Hernandez on deck. Van Slyke takes inside. And it's two and one. The shortstop and Damas is swung over. So there's a lot of room up the middle. Although LeMahieu is shaded towards second base. Over at first base is Mark Reynolds playing well off the line for the right-handed hitting Van Slyke who takes inside. Now three and one. Uh, Thomas has been playing actually in the outfield grass at his shortstop position. See, sometimes the guys will start on the grass and then come in. No, as the pitch is on its way home, he has remained on the grass. Now three and one to Van Slyke. Out of a half swing, fouls it off to the right. Three and two. The shortstop, you'll be playing back on the, on the grass. You have some pretty good confidence in your arm. As hard as Van Slyke hit the home run, his first at bat, you might want to play back on the grass. Might want to play back on the berm. On three and two, ground ball to third. Backhanded by Arenado. Picks it up, throws across the diamond. For the first out of the third, Arenado with the backhand. Kind of jogged toward third base to keep Ethier close before picking it up, throwing across his body, and made a more difficult play than it looked easy. We would suggest that you hit the ball to somebody else. Anybody. Don't hit it to third. That was the last pitch thrown by Jordan Lyles. Uh, Sam Mole, left-hander's coming in. Walt Weiss comes out. Takes the ball. Pats Lyles on the fanny. And we're going to take a break. So the Dodgers with a runner at third. One man out. We're in the top half of the third inning. And they've got a three-nothing lead.
Walt Weiss opts to go with the right-hander, the heavily bearded Justin Miller instead of the lefty Sam Bowl. We're expecting to see him a little later on today. Now the uh, Rockies bring the infield in as Kike Hernandez steps in. Dodgers looking to expand their 3 0 lead. Ethier leading from third after the line leadoff triple into the right field corner. Miller set at the belt, and here's the pitch. On the knees, one ball, no strikes. Justin Miller, 6'3, 215. He's 28. Grew up in Bakersfield. Pitch with the Rockies last year. He's bounced around, was with the Tigers in 2014. Field in Hernandez takes inside and it's two balls and no strikes. AJ Ellis is on deck. Ellis, the short, uh, rather, Ethier, the short lead. Hernandez takes a fastball up and in. And it's three balls and no strikes. Kiki Hernandez is a little bit different of a, a, a stance. He uses a timing mechanism. Starts with an open stance and up on his uh, left front toe. Then he closes the stance as the pitcher is about to release the ball and then makes the stride back towards the pitcher. Miller getting the sign from his catcher, Nick Hundley. And the 3-0. High and away, ball four. So Hernandez with the walk. The Dodgers have runners at the corners, and here is A.J. Ellis. Well, we talked about the walks that the uh, Rockies issued last year. Overall, nobody else in baseball has many, 579. So you go to the bullpen, and what happens? Well, Miller walks the first man that he faces. And A.J. Ellis coming up. A.J. has six hits this spring. He singled to center, scored a run back in the second inning when the Dodgers scored three. They've got runners at the corners with one man out here in the third. Miller set, quick throw to first base, and Kike Hernandez back with a head first slide. Well, double play in line with the infield, in particular up the middle with Adamas at short and LeMahieu at second. That opens up a little bit sizable gap to the left side between the shortstop and Arenado, the third baseman. There is a world of real estate between Para in left and Charlie Blackman in center, who's shaded toward right center. Now here's Miller set. Here's the pitch. And a bunt up the first baseline. Nicely done. Underhanded flip from Miller to Hundley. Sliding in under the tag is Ethier. And the Dodgers take a 4-0 lead. Boy, that was some slide by Andre Ethier on a terrific punt. By A.J. Ellis. Boy, I tell you what, Andre Ethier, give him credit, is that he was wide awake on the possibilities. We talked in the pregame show about anticipation, about the base running and being aggressive. Ethier coming down the line, and he sees right away he's got a chance to score. And the catch was made by Hundley on that toss out of the glove by the pitcher, Miller. But Hundley turned to his right, turned his back really to Ethier, and the tag was late. Well, you were talking about it on the pregame, about how aggressive the Dodgers have been on the base path, and that's a, that's a new mission statement for the Dodgers from their rookie manager, Dave Roberts. Now first and second with one out. Ellinger takes inside and low one ball and no strikes. Well, Dave Roberts is going to start off his meeting with his players today after I talked to him in, the, uh, in his office. I said, look, we went over the plays last night with uh, both Utley and Barnes scoring from third on wild pitches. The ball gets away from the catcher. He says, I'm going to start the meeting off with how positive that is. Oh, they're going to run into some outs here and there. But I really like the aggressiveness. Bellinger with runners at first and second. Miller said, here's the pitch. In the center field, a long run for Blackman. He can't get it. It's going to roll to the wall. Hernandez will score. A.J. Ellis, he's on his way home. And the throw to the plate's not in time. How about that? A.J. Ellis scoring on a double on a base hit up the gap in left center field, running all the way. Again, the aggressiveness of the Dodgers on the base pass. And for Cody Bellinger, his second double of the game, has two RBIs, and the Dodgers have a 6 nothing lead. Well, for Bellinger, does a good job, and it drives it. Chris Woodward, the third base coach, also finding out about who can run and who cannot. 
A.J. kind of tongue-in-cheek came up to me last year. I said, well, A.J. is a little speed challenge. Well, he's picked up a step or two this year because uh, in the past he may not have scored. So this is a new look for the Dodgers. As Charlie Culberson steps in. Bellinger leads from second. Culberson fouls it off the end of the bat. It's nothing in one. We'll pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Dodgers radio network. Charlie Stein and Rick Monday coming to you from Salt River Fields at Talkingston on the outskirts of Scottsdale. It's about a 45-minute drive from Glendale as Culberson fouls it back to the screen. And it's been all Dodgers all the time so far this afternoon. Kershaw has been terrific. No runs, two hits, just 21 pitches in two innings. The Dodgers offensively, six runs and six base hits. Culberson, a strikeout victim in his first at-bat. And the 0-2 is on the way. Justin Miller to Charlie Culberson. Time called just as uh, Miller releases the pitch. Well, we had a visitor this morning back at the offices. We were asked... Who has impressed you so far? We said in unison, play uh, Cody Bellinger. Gave him a good scouting report. Here's the 0-2. Call strike three. Culberson is called out on strikes. That is the second out of the third. Now Kershaw steps in. He walked in his first at-bat on four pitches. Jordan Lyles didn't last long, two and a third. And he gave up four of the six runs so far. Kershaw takes outside and low, one ball and no strikes. Clayton went to Dave Roberts the other day, said, look, let me hit. And so he is. And he's going to pitch five innings today if all goes according to plan. People are trying to watch a game here. Miller Have deals seat, and please. Kershaw fouls it back. That's a good rip. Have a seat, please. One ball, one strike. Jock Peterson on deck. The Dodgers' 12th game of the exhibition season, 7-2-2 two two to this point. Rockies are 5-6, and six, and this is their 12th game. Hershaw takes a strike, and it's 1-2. and two. For the Rockies, this is their sixth season at Salt River Fields. They share it with the Diamondbacks. It's really a Beautiful facility. The inside and low to Kershaw. Two and two. 345 down the lines. 390 in the power alleys and 410 feet in straightaway center. When we look around uh, Salt River Fields today and they're an inordinate number of blue jerseys and blue caps in the stands. High and outside. Two and two to Kershaw. And again, it could not be a more perfect Sunday afternoon here in the desert. 76 at game time. On three and two to Kershaw. Swung on and missed strike three, and that ends the inning. But the Dodgers come up with three more runs on three hits and leave one and lead six nothing after two and a half.
comfortable six to nothing lead. And Clayton Kershaw completing his warm up tosses got out on the hill a little bit late after having made the last out of the top half of the third. Struck out swinging and was muttering to himself all the way back to the dugout. But the fact is that when Kershaw was warming up today prior to the game, 17 uniform personnel with the Dodgers were watching him every move. And you would make the suggestion to young players and young pitchers in particular, you might want to pay attention about how he goes through his routine, how he's demanding about how he throws his warm-up pitches, how he warms up. But it was really a, it was something. I looked down, I counted 17 were watching him warm up. Nick Hundley will lead it off. Right-handed hitting catcher for the Rockies in the bottom of the third. Kershaw delivers a fastball for a strike, and it's nothing in one. Hear the phrase all the time about how the ball comes out of a guy's hand. Easy. Ground ball to short. Be an easy play for Kike Hernandez. Throws across the diamond. It is Hundley retired. First out of the third. So watching him play catch the other day. Kershaw but was not throwing hard, but watching the ball come out of his hand with such velocity, and he was not throwing it hard at all. It was. It was staggering. Then you watch him throw a bullpen a few minutes later, and he's muttering to himself when he's not completed the perfect pitch. Christian Adamas, the shortstop, takes a strike. Nothing in one. Oh, do the Rockies have issues at shortstop? Oh, do they have issues? Adamas is in the mix. And they've got a young fella named Trevor Story who may be their future shortstop. And a ground ball to third. Culverson picks it up, throws across the diamond. And that's the second out of the inning. The throw is on the uh, home plate side of first base and watching the footwork of Bellinger at first. He knows what he's doing over there. Well, you shift feet and you go towards the home plate side and all of a sudden left-handed thrower, it's not your left foot that's on the, the bag. Left foot on the bag, your left-handed throw, it allows you to go extend a little bit farther, but he switched over, went right foot to the bag as his left foot went to foul territory to receive the throw. So two out, nobody on. So, of course, they trade Tulowitzki last year. They get Reyes, and they cut $50 million off their payroll, and they get three young pitchers of whom they're very happy with. And Reyes has his uh, domestic issue. He's going to court in Hawaii first week of April. I think on opening day for the Rockies, their everyday shortstop is going to court, facing potentially a jail term. And then when that's done, baseball, you know, is going to, Maxwell's hammer is going to come down on his head. Um, they have no idea how long he'll be suspended. So Walt Weiss, who was a terrific shortstop in his day, as a, a gaping hole. And then the question is, will Reyes ever play a game in Colorado? So that deal early on has been an unmitigated disaster. As Kershaw delivers a fastball inside corner at the knees to Charlie Blackman. And it's two balls and two strikes. Two out, bottom half of the third. Kershaw deals. Blackman takes a ball in the dirt and is now three and two. It seemed like about 10 minutes after Reyes was traded to Colorado last year, he was already complaining about Colorado. It does not look like it will be much of an issue for him in Colorado. And fastball swung on and missed strike three. Blackman had fastball blow right past him for Kershaw that was his second strikeout of the game and he has now retired seven in a row and through three they lead the Rockies six to nothing
as we head to the fourth inning. Shane Carl. Lean fellow, 6'4", 185 pounds. On roster invitee out of Santa Cruz. It's a, a double A last year in uh, New Britain. It was 14 and 7 in 26 starts. He'll be facing Jock Peterson, Chase Utley, and Andre Ethier. Peterson, one for two, a couple of RBIs. Singled home two in the second inning. And a ground ball to third. And Nolan Arenado. Short hops it, makes it look so easy. The shift was on. Arenado, the only fellow on the left side of the infield, and it was nearly even with the bag, comes in, makes a short hop, and throws out Peterson. Oh. Tell you, don't hit it to him. By the way, we've been put on notice that pretty good baseball guy, one of the nice people listening to us, along with his wife. The killer, Rick Keller, Keller is uh, listening to us. And uh, to the killer, we send our best. Chase up leaves the batter, takes a strike, nothing in one. That's a baseball man. Utley with a fly ball to center field. And it drops in for a base hit. So Chase Utley is one for three. Robbed of a hit in his last at bat. But bloops himself a single into left center, and here comes Andre Ethier. If Ethier hits the ball any harder in the rest of this game than he did that triple down in the right field corner in the third inning to lead it off, they better clear the stadium. Because it didn't take but a flash of a second to get down into the corner. So a short lead for Utley at first. Ethier takes high and outside. One ball and no strikes. Andre wears his sunglasses when he hits. That's a relatively new thing in your day. I don't remember anybody wearing shades in the batter's box. No, and if, if you wore sunglasses, unless they were, you know, a prescription might be the uh, the case, but it was the flip down glasses, which I would, I don't understand why more players don't use them because the regular glasses that you have are really not dark enough if a ball is hit right up near the sun, at least in my opinion. Eighth year on 2 and 0. Oh. Takes outside three balls and no strikes, but stepping into the batter's box with sunglasses on yeah. is a relatively new thing. But it does make sense if if you're having to squint because of the bright sunshine. But the advent also now with the, the wraparound glasses, you, you do not have any restrictions from a vision standpoint on the peripheral side of the your view. Shift on for Ethier on three and oh, here's the pitch. High and outside, a four pitch walk to Andre Ethier. So the Dodgers have first and second with one man out. And Scott Van Slyke's coming up. Van Slyke homered a long distance shot to left in the second inning. And bounced to third in the third inning. Boy, this is like a mid-season game with the Rockies. Long, slow, torturous. Pitching that is challenged. And uh, but they have a new weapon this year. They're going to raise some of the sections of the outfield wall at Coors Field. That'll even it out. Yeah, they're making a beautiful wall at Coors Field. We just don't know who's going to pay for it. <laughs> it's too easy, isn't it? The fence from center field to the visiting bullpen, all the way then to the Rockies' bullpen. They're raising it nine feet, but it'll be a beautiful wall. Van Slyke takes inside. 
One ball, one strike. They're raising the wall, but not bringing in the fences. As one of the Rocky people said, well, we did a five-year study on that. Man, it's like swings and misses. And it's one and two, five years. You look at five games, you can tell what's going on there. Well, they're going to see if raising the fences will do something. I mean, they got Ponderosa territory from power alley to power alley. Problem really isn't so much the home runs, it's the doubles and the triples as Van Slyke take a call strike three. That's the second out of the fourth. And it's a place where uh, doubles and triples congregate often. There's so much space out there. And there's only three guys to cover all the real yeah. estate. So you play deep, singles will drop in. If you play shallow, balls will go over your head. Yeah. They don't need to raise the fences, they need to lower the stadium. It's almost a mile above sea level. Well, you know, Chavez Ravine is one thing, but that would be a yes. You have to really go underground for that. Dodgers with a six to nothing lead. They've out hit the Rockies seven to two. Shane Carl, the third Rocky pitcher of the day. And Kike Hernandez rips one foul over the Dodger dugout into the stands down the third baseline. It's nothing and two. Hernandez has walked, scored a run, and bounced out. Five-year study. <laughs> what took so long? Well, the humidor didn't really <laughs> solve it. <laughs> I guess not. Hernandez pops it into short right center. Out goes LeMay, who having trouble with the sun, and finally he'll make the catch between Carlos Gonzalez coming in from right and Charlie Blackman coming in from center. No runs, one hit, a walk, and two left after three and a half. Dodgers six of it. Dodgers mini plan. Choose from games with great promotions featuring fan favorites such as bobbleheads and brand new retired number pins. Visit Dodgers.com slash mini plans. On this picture perfect Sunday afternoon, Clayton Kershaw has been pretty near picture perfect. Gave up a couple of hits in the first inning. He's retired the last seven. And the first pitch to Ryan Rayburn leading off the bottom of the fourth is low and outside. One ball, no strikes. It'll be Rayburn, Nolan Arenado, and Carlos Gonzalez. Outfield straight away, Ethier especially deep in left. As Rayburn takes high and in, and it's two and oh. Dodgers open for real in San Diego. 
Reds. Kershaw misses high and outside. Three balls, no strikes. He overthrew the pitch. And you can see him mutter to himself after he released it. Monday, April 4th. Dodgers and Padres in San Diego. Now on 3-0, and a call strike 3-1. and one. Dodgers open with a three-game series. Against the Padres down there. And then up to San Francisco for four. And a fastball high. Ball four. The first walk given up by Kershaw here in the fourth inning. And a couple of pitches up in the strike zone. Clayton has uh, aspirations to go five innings in this game. Rick Cunningham walking around uh, over on the near end of the Dodgers third base dugout. That's something to uh, Dave Robertson. Now Honeycutt's picking up the uh, the walkie-talkie. And I think he may be giving the bullpen a call here in uh, just a minute, depending upon Kershaw and how he does in this inning. And he's facing one of the game's best, Nolan Arenado. Takes one up and in, and uh, as he gets out of the way, his helmet came flying off. That's another pitch that's up. So is their little uh, tired legs, possibly? You would not think so watching the way that Kershaw trains. That's the other part. We talked about his, his pitching. To watch him go through his daily workout on the field, amazing. One ball, no strikes. Arenado takes high and away. Two balls, yeah. no strikes. And so Ellis is going to go out and have a chance. Yeah, so now he's going to reset the sights. And Honeycutt also looking, uh, sitting at the rest of the coaches out of the dugout to the near side. But there is a difference in Kershaw as far as the release point. He has been up with just about everything this inning. Once Kershaw's day is done, we're expecting to see Yimmy Garcia, Adam Libitor, Matt West, Chris Anderson, and maybe Jarrell Cotton. Dodgers six runs, seven base hits. The Rockies no runs in two. Kershaw set at the chest. Here's the pitch. Fastball swing and a miss. That was thrown with great vengeance. Yeah, that was also up, however. Two balls and a strike. Got the sense he threw that fastball as much with anger as with precision. Two and one to Arenado, who's had an unbelievable spring. Has a base hit today. Pops it up. First base side, Bellinger shading his eyes halfway between first base and the plate, makes the catch, he's shading his eyes with the bare hand. Oh, he's got to shade his eyes because he's not wearing sunglasses. Now the sun is off to his left as he stands at first base, but you would make the, uh, also make the argument, if there's a foul ball down the right field line, as he would go down to get it, he's going to be staring up into the sun. He made the catch. Arenado's retired. And here comes Cargo. Carlos Gonzalez robbed of a base hit in the first inning on a diving, sprawling catch by Jock Peterson. And here's a fly ball to center field. There goes Peterson way back at the wall. He is going to track it down, actually, a couple of steps in front of the warning track. Peterson wears those wraparound shades, and you can see all the way up here, the sun reflecting off of them as he makes the catch. Got a good jump, and he had to, to hold the glove up at the last second to get a little help also in shading his eyes. There's two things you can use besides the sunglasses. If it gets near the, uh, the sun, you can use the bill of the cap off the side and then the glove as well. Ever try to catch a Frisbee on the beach that happens to go into the sun? Well, the Frisbee's a lot bigger than a baseball still hit you in the nose. Mark Reynolds fly to left in his first at bat. Dodgers with a 6-0 lead. Kershaw delivers a strike and it's nothing in one. Kershaw who walked Ryan Rayburn and then had uh, a couple of frustrating pitches to Arenado seems to have found what he was looking for. But he delivers one in the dirt that travels maybe 55 feet kicks off the chest protector of Ellis to the left, and Rayburn goes to second base on the wild pitch. Oh, 
Reynolds with the Cardinals last year, 271. Correction, 230. 13 home runs, 48 runs batted in at 230. Now the 1-1, Kershaw, low and inside, 2-1. Two and one. Gerardo Parra is on deck. Mentioned earlier, since the turn of the century, 2016 already. The Dodgers are 50 games over 500 against the Rockies. Another pitch in the dirt blocked by A.J. Ellis. And the count goes to 3-1. and one. 171 and 121. The Dodgers against the Rockies. Last year, 11-8. Rayburn at second base with two out. Three and one to Reynolds, who swings and grounds it foul into the Dodger dugout. The count is three and two. Corey Brown, who's looking to find his way into the Dodger roster come opening day, probably a long shot. Made the clean stab in the dugout of that foul ball. Now on three and two, here's the pitch. Call strike three, Mark Reynolds down on strikes. No runs, no hits, a walk of the man left and through four, the Dodgers six and the Rockies nothing. through four innings, has struck out three, walked one, and he has held a, almost an unfair standard. He's thrown but 48 pitches through the four. He's walked one, given up a couple of base hits in conference with uh, Rick Honeycutt and Dave Roberts. In the meantime, Jimmy Garcia is warming in the Dodger bullpen, so he may just go four. We'll find out soon enough. A.J. Ellis leads off in the fifth and takes a strike. It's nothing and one. Top of the fifth brought to you by the 2016 Chevy Silverado. Chevrolet, find new roads. Ellis fouls it off to the right. And it's nothing and two. A.J. with a beautiful bunt in the third inning with Ethier at third. Bunted it up the first baseline and Ethier would Beat the tag at the plate. Dodgers with three in the second, three in the third, and Ellis with a sky-high fly ball to right. Easy play for Carlos Gonzalez. 
So Ellis is retired first out of the fifth. Gorgeous weather today. You hear many times in Arizona, high sky. What's the definition of a high sky? Well, there's a few uh, little streaks of clouds, but uh, there's no clouds above it. And you don't really have good depth perception. The ball's hit a mile into the air. A little hazy, about a thousand miles off at the left center, but what a gorgeous afternoon. Cody Bellinger with two doubles and two RBIs today. Takes inside and low one ball and no strikes. No wind, no humidity, no clouds, no nothing. Bellinger takes under the knees. And it's 2-0. And, oh. and that pretty much sums up the Rockies offense so far. And no pitching either. Here's a 2-0. -oh. Outside three balls and no strikes. Bellinger, again, we're just watching him for the first couple of weeks. Has terrific plate awareness. He'll strike out some, but he'll walk a lot. Here's a 3-0. -oh. Takes up and in a four-pitch walk. So he's been on base all three times today. Cody Bellinger. Second walk given up by Shane Carl. Well, the Rockies, to be charitable and euphemistic, are a team in transition. There are a lot of guys who were with Colorado last year that aren't anymore for any number of different reasons. And We'll run them down al alphabetically in a moment. Charlie Culberson is the batter. And he rips one foul toward the Dodger dugout, and it's nothing in one. John Axford, the hard-throwing right-hander. Rex Brothers. Brooks Brown, gone. Brown was with the Dodgers for about 10 minutes. Bad shoulder, and he's gone. Corey Dickerson, gone. Latroy Hawkins has retired. Tommy Canely, gone. Kyle Kendrick, Michael McHenry, Justin Morneau, Willie Rosario, and Troy Tulowitzki. All out of there. Now Culberson has been struck out twice today. Takes outside and low. One ball, one strike. One out, one on, top of the fifth. Six runs and seven hits for the Dodgers. No runs and two hits for the Rockies. Clayton Kershaw is on deck. Carl delivers, and Culberson with a fly ball to center field. Drifting on back is Charlie Blackman. He's shading his eyes. Makes the catch, second out of the fifth. This could be unique if Kershaw is going to complete his afternoon with four innings of pitched. And... Uh, he may have been talking to Rick Cunningham. Look, I want one more at bat. Normally, that's something that's said by position players, not by the pitcher. Oh, give me one more at bat. Well, nothing normal about Clayton Kershaw. Takes a strike, nothing in one. Still no guarantee he'll come out and pitch the fifth. As Jimmy Garcia had been warming. He's not at the moment. Bellinger leads off first with two outs. 6-0 Dodgers, top of the fifth. Kershaw takes outside and low. One ball, one strike. Dodgers six runs, six hits last night. As Kershaw lost one to left. And now having some difficulty with the sun is Gerardo Parra. He makes the catch. The inning is over. No runs, no hits, a walk of the man left at the halfway mark after four and a half innings of play. Dodgers six, Colorado nothing.
the bottom half of the fifth. Most notably, Clayton Kershaw remains in the game for one more. Jimmy Garcia is back warming up in the pen. Corey Brown takes over in left field, and Micah Johnson over at second base. Well, on this Sunday afternoon, Dodgers really could not ask for much more than what they've gotten so far from their team. Six runs, seven hits. Bellinger, a couple of doubles. Van Slyke, a home run. As Gerardo Parra leads off against Kershaw, who just threw his 49th pitch, a swing and a miss, and it's nothing in one. Kershaw's been spot on, had some difficulty with some control in the fourth inning. It still worked his way out. And a ball inside and low. One and one to Parra. Again, being held to an entirely different level. He, he walks a batter, and then the next batter he's finding some difficulty finding the plate, and he was able to find his way out of the mess. Missing inside, two and one to Parra. Strikeout victim in his first at bat. Clayton on two and one. Fastball rolled up the first baseline. Bellinger will take it by himself. A couple of steps from the bag. Then he steps on it. Parr is retired one out. Energy level of Clayton Kershaw. There's nothing about spring training. as say, well, I'm going to put it on cruise control. That's not the way that he functions. I see it continues to get loose in the bullpen. But for Clayton Kershaw, I remember the last inning he started Everything was high, walked the leadoff hitter, had a wild pitch. Then he threw a couple of balls in the dirt, and then he kind of reset the sights. DJ LeMay, who steps in, bounced to third in his first at bat and takes the strike. It's nothing at one. LeMay, you the all star last year. The defense is there. The other thing that gets overlooked, he had 23 stolen bases. He was caught stealing just three times last year. Takes under the knees. One ball, one strike. The top of it hit 301. DJ LeMahieu. And the tallest second baseman in the game. There's a breaking ball. That was a deep bucket. Mm. You know it's a good one when you hear the crowd react to it. That's exactly what we had here. One ball and two strikes. You say goodbye, I say hello. The one two, LeMayhew swings and rolls it up the third baseline and it rolls foul. Once it got about six inches foul, Kershaw kicked it toward the uh, first base dugout. By the way, that five year plan on to raise the defenses and what have you, how about five consecutive losing seasons? One shy, the franchise record. It went from 2001 to 2006. In fact, for the Rockies in their 23 seasons, They've had a winning record just seven times. Ooh. Three of those seven came in the franchise's first five years of existence. And there were the Blake Street Bombers. Larry Walker, Andres Galarraga, Vinny Castilla, Ellis Burks. Ground ball slowly hit to third. In comes Culberson, picks it up and throws a strike and gets the speedy LeMahieu. Charlie Culberson has played a sensational third base and shortstop defensively for the Dodgers. So he has. Being able to show the versatility and not the easiest to play is when you're catching the ball, you field it on one side of your body, you have to throw. I mean, he has been dazzling at shortstop, diving to his left, to his right. And some nifty plays now third. Two out, nobody on. Nick Hundley coming up. In seven years since the Rockies have gone to the postseason. But the biggest drought of Major League teams not making it to the postseason begins with the Seattle Mariners. 15 years without playing a 163rd game. Ground ball, one hopper to short. Kike Hernandez throws it low, and Bellinger can't dig it out. So a throwing error for Kike Hernandez. That's just a careless error in throwing it to the first baseman and not throwing it through the first baseman. Ball was hit like a rocket. 
Hernandez had plenty of time. Checked the signature on the baseball. And then throws it over, but a low throw. As nifty as uh, Bellinger's been at first base, somewhat surprising he didn't dig it out. But it was a bad throw, and Kike Hernandez simply had too much time to throw it. Christian Adamas takes inside one ball and no strikes. So the Mariners have been 15 years since the postseason. The Marlins, 13 years. Padres, 10 years. The White Sox, 8 years. And it's been 7 years since Colorado's played in the postseason. Broken bat, ground ball slowly hit to third. Culberson picks it up and a sidearm sling. Throws out Adamas and the inning is over. No runs, no hits, no one error, one man left. We'll go to the sixth. Kershaw's done. And Dodgers have a 6 nothing lead. Done, receiving high fives and a lot of smiles in the Dodger dugout. Five innings. No runs and two base hits. 60 pitches, 38 for strikes. And the Rockies have a new pitcher. Antonio Senzatella he is from Venezuela. Right-hander, first pitch, inside and low, one ball and no strikes. Jock Peterson leading it off. Peterson is one for three, singled home two in the second inning. Dodgers with three in the second, three in the third, and there's a line drive in the left, but right there and fighting the sun all the way is the two-time gold glove winner, Gerardo Parra. Pretty well hit by Peterson, first out of the six. Yeah, a couple of line drives if Jock Peterson is hit so far in this ball game one for the two run single that came in the second and this one the line drive out to left field so for uh, Peterson uh, we've been mentioning it's a new plan they've got to buy into it and now here's uh, Corey Brown his first at bat of the day and takes a strike nothing in one batting in the two spot that was uh, vacated by Chase Utley. Utley went one for three. Uh, fastball up and in from Sensatella. 6'1", 180 pounds. Uh, just 21 and as a fastball that can reach in the uh, mid 90s occasionally in the upper. Now Brown, big rip, fouls it back. Sensatella had a problem last year was with fingernails. Now, you figure, okay, what's a fingernail got to do with it? Well, it really bothered his grip 
and as a result of it, as well, we understand saw something was written about it, really affected his curveball. Could not throw it. Couldn't get the grip. Applied too much pressure, and it was painful. A one two. Brown tried to check a swing. Went around. He's been struck out. Sensatella fires the first two batters. Strikes out Brown. And here comes Micah Johnson. So Shane Carl stops the bleeding for Colorado. Goes two innings, no runs and a hit. A couple of walks and a strikeout. Sensatella is the fourth Rocky pitcher of the day. And Johnson takes inside and low one ball and no strikes. As Johnson tried to check his swing, went around, and Ted Barrett said, You went around, and you looked at Micah Johnson's face like, You're kidding. Here's the 1-1. Barrett is not somebody to trifle with. Johnson pops it up in the short right center field. And the center fielder, Charlie Blackman, takes charge. And the Dodgers go quietly as Johnson flies out. Nothing across. We go to the bottom of the sixth. And the Dodgers sitting pretty on a 6-0 lead. The bottom half of the six, beginning with Yimmy Garcia. A hard thrown right hander at this after a, a sterling five inning performance from Clayton Kershaw. No runs, two hits, three strikeouts, one walk. Threw 60 pitches in his five innings. And only in the first inning when he threw 15 did he throw more than 12. Six pitches in the second, 11 in the third. And then uh, fourth and fifth, he cruised across the finish line. Now Yimmy Garcia stepping in. To face the top of the order, Charlie Blackman. Dodgers made some defensive changes as well. Trace Thompson in right. Rico Noel now in center. And there's a strike to Blackman. And it's nothing in one. Jack Murphy is the new catcher. Blackman, just an all-around solid player. Takes under the knees, and it's one and one. Had six leadoff home runs last year. Has great speed. Boy, you better have great speed if you're going to be the center fielder at Coors Field. 
17 home runs. And he gets underneath it. Fly ball in the short right. Micah Johnson making the catch in front of his buddy Trace Thompson. That's the first out of the sixth. Yeah, Coors Field is a, is a place, so one of the fields in, in particular, that there is a premium on having mobile outfielders. Oh. Power alley to power alley. There's no more difficult place to play. So you better have three good defenders out there. If not, your center fielder is going to wind up with collapsed lungs. Ryan Rayburn, a walk and robbed of a hit by Charlie Culberson is Garcia. This is low and outside. One yeah. ball, one strike. Yeah, Coors Field was not really the idyllic uh, ballpark for maybe, say, Rico Cardi to play the outfield. <laughs> I think any outfield was ideal for Rico Cardi, but put a bat in his hand. Yep. The Generalissimo. Rico needed the designated hitter. At times, he wore a glove, and nobody really was able to figure out why. But he could hit. Oh. Ball inside and low. Two balls and two strikes. Ray Cook already once with the Cubs. He just had a flashback. He was in a batting cage. Ron Sander was going to be the next hitter. This is batting practice. And Rico kept swinging. Swinging and swinging. Garcia breaking ball popped up into center field. Retreating is Rico Noel makes a catch second out. So finally, Sando is taking a round. And you know, first round he might take ten swings. In the second round maybe seven. In the third round maybe five. It's a, the time allotment and Rico is like swing number twenty-five. And the late Ron Sando was one of the nice people and. Uh, Finally said, Rico, you want a sandwich? He goes, no, I take an entire meal. <laughs> I let I let you know when I'm through. And Ronnie was not really pleased. Boy, that would have been a death match fight. Ooh. There's a call strike. Ron Santo was one of the most dedicated players that I've ever seen. Of course, he helped a lot of people growing up. You know, Ron Santo, a lot of people forget he had he had diabetes and he had a childhood diabetes and he helped so many people it was just unbelievable and we watched him as a teammate in Chicago He's a wonderful man and we miss him dearly Nolan Arenado is the batter one ball one strike two out bottom of the six Garcia on in relief of Kershaw Dodgers six zip Arenado one for two make it two for three he has just been a hitting machine this spring. With his two hits this afternoon, he is 12 for 21. Slacker. It is remarkable what Santo was able to do with his career battling diabetes his entire life. He was one of the uh, truly fierce competitors and one of the nice, oh. nice people. One of the many reasons it was so much fun to broadcast games at Wrigley Field. As Carlos Gonzalez is the batter and takes a strike, it's nothing in one. The Rockies have a pinch runner. For Arenado. And our booth at Wrigley Field is immediately next to the Cubs radio booth. And it's separated by you know the glass partition. And just watching Santos face break out in joy when things were well and go into utter depression. 
when they lost and things weren't going well. He used to think he can't really feel this, but he did. He, he did. felt he every did. pitch of every game. And it was genuine. Yeah. yeah. He's a guy that we miss a lot. Gonzalez today is 0 for 2. And he swings and misses at a breaking ball. Juan Suriaco is the pinch runner at first base. Little fellow with a big number. Gonzalez swings and misses. He's been struck out. That ends the inning. No runs, one hit. Jimmy Garcia strikes out. Gonzalez will go to the seventh. Dodgers six to nothing. which we will get to as soon as we figure it out. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be in all the papers. <laughs> we begin the top half of the seventh inning with Trace Thompson leading it off of the Dodgers. He swings and fouls it back. Thompson's first at bat. This is the time of the of a ball game earlier on in spring training where even the box scores tomorrow in the newspapers will not have them listed. <laughs> See where the name is listed. We don't know either. <laughs> Thompson takes low and outside. Thompson has been interesting to watch him in the early goings. He's made some uh, stellar defensive plays. Still looking to find his way offensive. Mm -hmm. And like one thing uh, defensively also going to help him. He has no trouble going to his left and right and, and getting the ball. He's made uh, one terrific diving stop as well. He needs to work on charging the ball coming in on a, on a ground ball that's hit. Fastball call strike three inside corner. Thompson takes a call third strike. Antonio Sensatella in his second inning of relief for the Rockets. Kyle Parker has taken over in right field for Colorado. Raymel Tapia is in center. Juan Siriaco is at third base as Kike Hernandez swings and fouls it back to the screen. And it's nothing in one.
Tony Walters is the new catcher. They were getting it in before the deadline. Yeah. Mike Talkman is in the left field wearing number 80. Okay. Nice number for a wide receiver. It's Hernandez. Swings and misses. And it's one and one. What was his name? Talkman. Talkman. T A U C H M A N. Does he have a first name? Mike. Mike. We call him Big Guy. <laughs> That's a sure sign you have no idea who the hell he is. Hey, Big Guy. <laughs> Hernandez takes a call, third strike, two outs. <laughs> Better than Hey Meat. <laughs> <laughs> Heard that a time or two. Yeah. Too. <laughs> two out, nobody on, and A.J. Ellis is coming up. <laughs> well, Ellis is done, and now it's Jack Murphy's turn to hit. Sure JJ had a good day. Today. When, uh, yeah. No, actually, this is Rico Noel. Bad. With uh, Rob Segadin on deck. One of the things we've noticed this spring when Dave Roberts makes the substitutions, they are rarely straight up. Which we really enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> and Noel takes a ball in the dirt. One and two. And it works out really well for, for Dave Roberts because you know, he's been in charge of the lineups as a bench coach. He, he's seen them as a player and as, as a coach to begin with, and then the bench coach, and, or you're notifying the players of changes. So he's, he's manipulating the lineup during every game now. Noel takes a ball outside, and it's two and two. Which is going to help, and he's studying the, uh, the guys that are available right now. You know, during the season when you're making double switches, where are you going to place people? When will you make a double switch? What's the matchup? Who's going to be coming in for the other team? Noel fouls it into the dirt. Now let's pause 10 seconds for station identification here on the Dodgers radio network. On two and two, Rico Noel punches a base hit into right field. Noel, one of the things that we have noticed from the get-go, he may be the fastest man in camp. He can really run. I read something last year that Ricky Noel, when they timed him, was the fastest guy in baseball. I don't remember where I saw it, but fastest guy in baseball going from first to third. He can fly. Wonder if that was part of that five year study for the fences. Rob Segan in his first at bat. Cody Bellinger had a good day today. Two for two, two RBIs, a run scored, and a walk. And Segan hit a home run last night against the Mariners as he fouls it off to the right and out of play. Second and 304 this spring, seven for 23, three home runs and seven runs batted in. Three doubles. Former Yankee. Since Attila delivers a swing and a foul back. 0 and 2. Culberson is on deck. Go two, swung on and missed strike three, breaking ball in the dirt. That ends the inning. Sensatella comes in, pitches two innings, and he strikes out four. Seventh inning stretch, Dodgers six to nothing.
18th when the Dodgers host the Diamondbacks at 7:10. And the first 40,000 fans in attendance will receive an adult hooded sweatshirt presented by Bank of America. For tickets, visit dodgers.com slash promotions. As we go to the home half of the seventh inning, Dodgers have a new pitcher. The lefty Adam Libertor at a Western PA. Libertor is making his fourth appearance of the spring. Two runs and three hits in three innings of work. Dodgers with three pretty good lefties out of the bullpen. Libertor, Avalon, and J.P. Howell. A couple of other changes defensively as well. As Libertor completes his warm-up pitches, Elian Herrera takes over third base. And Brandon Hicks is now playing at shortstop. Segedin has taken over at first base as well. So all understudies out there now. Libertor's first pitch. This is Robert S. To Ryan Castle. There is strike. Castile. Brian Castile. Jimmy Garcia goes an inning, no runs and a hit and a strikeout. Fifteen pitches, ten strikes. It's Castile swings and misses. Dodgers with three in the second, three in the third, and since then game set and match. Kershaw five innings, no runs, two hits. Garcia, no runs in a hit in his inning. Now it's Libertor's turn. And on one and two, fastball, call strike three outside corner. So far this spring, the Dodgers have gotten terrific hitting. And frankly, pretty darn good pitching, too. It comes at a good time, too. You're searching for that number five starter. Brian Anderson having gone down already has had uh, the back surgery. So there is a starting position that is up for grab in the rotation. Brandon Beachy, a very solid performance last night. Uh, this is Mike Talkman. Handed hitter. This Talkman takes low and outside. Wow. Well, Talkman is the, uh, well, he's got a new fan. Bradley. The boy went to Bradley. Yeah, you were staying right on top of that. <laughs> what page is that, by the way, in their uh, bio? 185. Okay. It's about, let's yeah. see, it's about the halfway point of the book. So you have your name plastered all over the school. Well, and surprise, is. surprise. Wow. Well, now he's your here. best buddy, right? Absolutely. I got it. Michael Robert Tuckman. He's Peoria born and bred. Peoria, Illinois. Yeah, you messed that place up too. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving no stone unturned. Well, oh, let's see about this fellow. <laughs> Majored in business management and administration. Come to my school. So. He was a Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year in 2013. Let's see what else? Fine reading. family. <laughs> Let's 
see. If you were any kind of guy, you'd cancel your flight tonight. Make sure that you send down an invitation and take the young man to dinner. But I'm no kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll be on the plane, will you? I'll text him. This okay. is terrific. Ah. And I hope he, I hope he blocks your text. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two out. Where is he from? Peoria, man. He's yeah. okay. Bradley through and through. We don't have many, but we'll take them when we got them. Kirby Puckett actually played it here at Bradley. Indeed. And then the pick is get slim. <laughs> no, he wised up and left. <laughs> <laughs> With two out. Fly ball to left field. Well hit. And in left center. Oh, Rico wow. Noel makes a diving catch. Wow. The closing rate of Ricky Noel was sensational. It looked like Trace Thompson or Trace Johnson was the only one that's going to have a chance. Noel comes out of nowhere. What a catch. We're talking about his speed, and he's about as fast as anybody. A spectacular play, and that will end the inning. In spite of the back, Michael Talkman flying routinely the left. We'll go to the eighth. <laughs> Herman Marquez is the new pitcher for the Colorado Rockies. Marquez, 6'1", 185, from Venezuela. And he came over from the Tampa Bay Rays. Brandon Hicks leading it off at the Dodgers in the eighth. Fouls it back. It is nothing in one. He came over along with left-handed pitcher Jake McGee in the trade that would send Corey Dickerson to Tampa Bay and a breaking ball upstairs and inside to Brandon Hicks. And it's one ball and one strike. We're in the eighth inning. The Rockies got a terrific pitching performance this afternoon from a young fellow named Antonio Sensatella. Two innings, no runs, and a hit. Four strikeouts through 28 pitches and 21 for strikes. Hicks with the ground ball routinely hit to short. Just thrown out, one out, nobody on. Rockies with bullpen activity. Sensatella has gone back to work after his two solid innings. 
Uh, Iris Guerrero is going to come on and pinch hit. Well, that's a good sign for the that's Dodgers. A good sign. He's been sidelined for a while. With a knee. He was going to DH yesterday. So he sat him down for one more day, and here he is. And he takes a strike, nothing in one. And the left knees of Corey Seager and Justin Turner, well on the man. And a call strike to Guerrero, nothing in two. Seeger at first blush when he uh, tweaked the knee a couple of days ago. They said, uh oh, this could be uh, a meniscus or something. They took the MRI and it's a sprain, not a, a real serious one. They're going to sit him down for another week to 10 days or so. And they hope and expect, and talking to Dave Roberts this morning, that'll be good to go for opening day behind the curb a little bit, so he's going to have to get an awful lot of at-bats once he is healthy. He could do, you know, he could throw and hit a little bit, but running for now is out of the question. And Guerrero with a base hit into right center field. They had the shift on for him on the left side, and he poked a base hit to the right. It's a good sign, too. Now Jack Murphy coming up. Like the latter day Dennis Eckersley, doesn't it? So Guerrero with the lead off first. And Murphy, left handed hitter. Big swing. Helmet comes flying off his head. I'm putting your shirt. Take a good rip. Big swing. Foul ball. The helmet goes flying. The ball takes a nick out of the catcher's mask. All kinds of moving parts. One out, one on in the eighth. Dodgers six nothing as Murphy takes inside. One ball, one strike. I would imagine that Murphy does see some pitches inside. Starts with the open stance, has a hitch in the swing. Question is, as he gets the hands back up high enough as he begins the swing on a ball that's up and in on it. Left-handed hitter, and he takes a breaking ball for a strike. Murphy out of Sarasota, Florida. Came from the Blue Jays in the deal that sent Darwin Barney up to Toronto last year. Now the hitch in the swing where your hands are dropping is not bad unless you keep your hands way down. Then you're really susceptible to the ball that's up and in. On one and two to Jack Murphy. Takes inside. Now a lot of players, young players, will go down to uh, the Caribbean as well to play winter ball. Murphy's played winter ball each of the last four years in Australia, in Canberra. Now on two and two, swing well, and a miss. So he has been retired. First strikeout for Marquez. This is the second out of the eighth. Corey Brown coming up now. Brown, his second at bat. Struck out. In the seventh inning against Sensatella. And a call strike to the left handed hitting Corey Brown. Six runs, nine hits for the Dodgers, no runs, three hits for the Rockies. Brown played collegiately at Oklahoma State. Fouls it off to the left and out of play. He's 30 and has played in 39 major league games. With the Nationals and 
played three games, one at bat with the Red Sox last year. High and away. One ball, two strikes. With Micah Johnson on deck. Marquez deals and Brown swings and misses. He's been struck out. That ends the inning. That had some mustard on it. No runs, one hit. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Dodgers six and Colorado nothing. To expect and more at a new low price for 2016. Watch every out of market game with all 30 teams live in true HD on over 400 supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Jarrell Cotton is now on in relief for the Dodgers. Listed at 5'11, 195. I exaggerated on on both counts but he can throw hard he's from the Virgin Islands and now lives up in Michigan because he likes the snow and his first pitch is outside and high one ball and no strikes to Tony Walters caught in a 20th round pick back in 2012, but the Dodgers have their eye on him. Line drive, base hit, headed toward the right field corner. And Walters will hold at first base. His team down six to nothing. And Trace Thompson with a good arm, throwing it in from the corner. And the Rockies have a leadoff runner aboard. Yeah, Cotton, pretty good fastball. The thing that has impressed uh, some of the Dodgers uh, front office personnel, baseball operations. Out of the fastball, we can spot it inside and outside. The changeup. And for a young player to have a late fade on a changeup early, same arm speed is, is a big, big plus. Here's Rafael Inoa. Once upon a time in the Dodger organization. Takes a strike, nothing in one. His first at bat of the day. Cotton last year began at Great Lakes on to Rancho Tulsa in Oklahoma City. There's a line drive base hit into right field. So Walters singles and now Inoa singles. And the Rockies have their second runner in scoring position all day.
Ramel Tapia is coming up. Cotton, you look at him and his mannerisms. Like a young Tom Flash Gordon out there. Uh, ball outside, one ball, no strikes. What a great career Flash Gordon had. And his son, Devaris, is doing pretty well down in Miami. Outside and low, two balls and no strikes. Noel Cuevas is in the on-deck circle for the Rockies. Uh, Tappy, a chance to just continue to impress. He's had a good spring so far. Swing and a miss. Two balls and one strike. So Cotton with four different stops at various levels of Dodgers organization last year. Well, thankfully, the elevator was heading up. The 2 1 Tapia swings and misses. There's Cotton the changeup. The yeah. There's the changeup. Same arm action. Does not slow it down. Watch the reaction of the hitter. For those that are on the simulcast watching, I mean, Tapia is way out in front. Tapia 7 for 17 this spring. Left handed batter, pretty deep crouch. Cotton set. Here's the pitch. Hop foul off to the left and out of play. Deep Crouch is still offering the ball to his shoulder high. Crowd reacting. If the fan evidently botched a chance to have a souvenir. As if he doesn't feel bad enough, and if his hand doesn't hurt enough, then he gets it from the fans. On two and two, just outside, three balls and two strikes. Good try. Pretty good movement, that ball tailing away from left-handed hitters. Uh, Jarrell Cotton staring in for the sign from Jack Murphy with runners at first and second, three and two, nobody out. Swung on and missed, strike three. So Cotton. Strikes out, Tapia. What would have been ball four. It was down below the knees. Noel Cuevas. It's been hitting for Ryan Rayburn. Juan Siriaco is on deck. <laughs> well, we're at the uh, oldies portion of our program. <laughs> Players, numbers on their back, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And 60s for that matter. Fly ball. Headed toward deep left center field. It's going to roll to the wall. Walters will score. Inoa is on his way home, and he will score. On the double by Noel Cuevas. And the Rockies are on the board. The Dodger lead has been trimmed to 6-2. to two. On this pitch, very good pitch to hit. Cuevas takes advantage of it. So the damage is done. But the Dodgers, again, they had uh, the cutoff man in the right position. The ball coming back into the infield. Just the little things. They work in so many different drills. How do you evaluate a team? Well, are they lined up in the right place for a long distance relay? Yes. Now here's Siriaco taking a breaking ball for a strike. Nothing in one. One Siriaco. Again, through the first uh, 12 games now. Dodgers have 
played fundamentally sound baseball. They've been aggressive on the base paths. Hitting well, pitching well. But it is March the 13th. But so far, so good. One ball, one strike. There's a breaking ball for a strike. One and two. To Syriaco. Kyle Parker is on deck. Cotton on one and two. Swag on the miss strike three. We're back and fired it. Syriaco down on strikes. Two out. And here's Kyle Parker. Dodgers with three in the second, three in the third, have been in firm control ever since. And here are the Rockies, denting the Dodgers' armor a little bit in the bottom of the eighth. Cotton delivers a strike, and it's nothing in one. Parker, 46 games with the Rockies last year, hit 179, and he hits one to deep left field and off the wall. And over the wall for a grounds rule double. So Cuevas will score. Parker with the double. Third run for the Rockies here in the eighth. It is six to three, Doug. Jack Murphy goes out to talk with Jarrell Cotton and <laughs> pats him on the back and tries to settle him down. Uh, settle him down, but you cannot throw pitches in the big part of the plate, and that's what he's throwing in this inning. So the Dodger lead is now 6-3. to three. Ryan Castile is coming up. Right-handed hitter with an open stance. Six runs, nine hits for the Dodgers, one error. The Rockies, 3-7-0. And, oh. and a one hopper to short. And that will end the inning. Brandon Hicks throws them out. Three runs, four hits, one left. We'll go to the ninth. Dodgers, 6-3. picture-perfect Chamber of Commerce Sunday afternoon here in the Valley of the Sun. Dodgers 6-3. to three. The game time temperature was 76. Barely a breeze. A 
Just a lovely day for the Dodgers in front of 11,842, a 6-3 lead. As Micah Johnson leads off in the ninth. Johnson flied to center in his only plate appearance. <laughs> now, if you're just joining us, Scott Van Slyke hit a home run today. A.J. Ellis had a single and a beautiful bunt that would produce a run. Cody Bellinger had a couple of hits, two doubles, two RBIs, a run scored and a walk. And then Clayton Kershaw, no runs and two hits in five innings. Averaging 12 pitches per inning, 60 and 48 of them for strikes. Struck out three, walked one. Johnson with a ground ball to short. Speedy runner is thrown out by a step and a half. First out of the ninth inning. Jimmy Garcia, no runs in a hit. Adam Libertor, a perfect seventh inning. Jarrell Cotton struggled in the eighth. Now here's Thompson. Trey struck out in his first at bat. Plays off a breaking ball. It's nothing in one. Thompson fouls it off to the right. Well, the normal cast of players that they brought in today with his Dodger ball club. Very good afternoon. Jock Peterson hit the ball hard twice. Two run it single in the second, then lying down in the sixth inning. So those swings were, were much better. Eighth year hit the ball about as hard as a human mm -hmm. could. That triple in the third inning. Pulled it down the right field line. And Thompson loops a base hit into right field. There's a notion about Stretching it into a double and retreats to first. And yeah, Trace Thompson has shown that he has the ability to hit the ball and hit it with authority the opposite way. That ball's not handled cleanly by Parker in right field. Thompson was already in position. He made the turn at first base, made it hard. He was just looking and waiting to see if there was going to be a bobble of the ball. Had there been, he'd been at second. Matt West is warming up in the Dodger pen. He will pitch the ninth. One out and one on. Elian Herrera gets his first plate appearance. Takes high. One ball, no strikes. And Rico Noel is on deck. Herrera, of course, came up in the Dodger organization. Spent a little time in Milwaukee, and now he is back. Swings and fouls it off to the left. Sold out Salt River Fields game today. Almost 12,000 for the Dodgers. Three sellouts in a row. Angels, Cubs, and back in Glendale, and this one over here. One and two to Elian Herrera. Here's the pitch. Just inside and low. Two and two. For Mon Marquez, the fifth pitcher of the day for the Rockies, and a chopper to second base. They throw to second and get the force out there. Trace Thompson went in standing up. Did not slide. He should have been Two sliding. things that happen. A, you have to slide there in case the ball is bobbled or at the last second the guy cannot uh, get out of his glove and, and throw the second base back. The other thing from, from staying healthy, if you slide, you're going to reduce the leg injuries. So that is something that will be discussed with Trace Thompson. When you 
go running into a bag standing up. You got two issues at play. One, the ankle, and two, the hamstring with that sudden stop. And the knees, too. Yeah. So. The other thing, too, if the ball is bobbled and you're going in and you're not sliding, you're not going to reach the bag as quickly as you would if you are sliding. It allows you options. There's nowhere to go if you're standing up and the play is that close at the bag. Yeah, generally speaking, a slide, the worst thing that can happen is a little strawberry. Those are always fun. Yeah, quick toss down to first base as Herrera gets back. Two out in the ninth. Rico Noel fouls it off to the right. Well, you root for this kid Noel to get on base just so you can watch him run because he is. I'd like to see him hit a gapper. <laughs> Left center, or right center. Touch them all. One and two. Noel takes a call strike three and. That will end the inning. No runs, one hit. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Dodgers, six to three. a cell phone and must be his young son and he is uh, got a blue beard my guess is it's not natural new pitcher for the Dodgers as we go to the bottom of the ninth Could be a mistake. he's wearing a Dodger uniform and, uh, Matt West is the new pitcher, he too is wearing a Dodger uniform and has no blue beard. West 6 1 2 30 came over from the Blue Jays middle of last year and made two appearances with the Dodgers and 12 appearances in Tulsa. First pitch at the bottom of the ninth, the Michael Tuckman. Pride of Peoria. Four years. In Peoria. Actually grew up in Peoria four years at Bradley. A fine institution I might.
Yeah, you're laughing. We can spell ASU, pal. All right? Just say it. We went by the campus of Arizona State University today. Mm -hmm. As the guy from Bradley was following me because you could not find the ballpark. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Meanwhile, poor Michael Talkman, a fine human being, is taking a call third strike. He, he got a bad call. Right you are, pal. I'll, I'll, I'll settle for that. One out. <laughs> Matt West strikes him out. Dodgers six runs and ten base hits. And the Rockies three runs and seven. Fly ball toward the right field corner, slicing foul and out of play, and it's nothing in one. Max George is the batter. Fella caught the ball in the stands and was profoundly indifferent about it. Does anybody want it? Somebody said, yeah, I'll take it. West deals, breaking ball outside. One ball, one strike. West is from Houston. A second round pick of the Texas Rangers back in 2007. The Dodgers acquired him for cash from the Rays. May of last year. Max George is out of Colorado. Parker to be exact. He's from. He's heading back to the dugout after swinging and missing. There's two out in the ninth. So Matt West has come in. Struck out the first two batters he has faced. And Tony Walters stepping in. Kershaw, five innings today, no runs, two hits, and just 60 pitches. Garcia, Lipitor, a couple of shutout innings. Jarrell Cotton struggled in the eighth. And gave up three runs and four hits. But Matt West is an out away from Dodgers winning their eighth this spring. Outside and high. Doc Peterson, while going one for four today, hit the ball solidly twice and drove in two. Van Slyke hit a home run. Ethier lined a triple into the right field corner in the third. A.J. Ellis, a single and a, a terrific bunt that would drive in a run. Bellinger, another solid day. A couple of doubles, a run scored in a walk, and two RBIs. West misses inside. It's all in all a good day for the Dodgers. Above and beyond the score, they just played the game well. Good pitching, good hitting. Foul off to the left and out of play. And Fundamentally sound and again, once again, aggressive on the base pass. Tony Walters single to right in the eighth inning. On three and two with two out. Grounded foul up the first baseline. Pass Eric Young. Doesn't have the first step that he used to. And the third base coach for the Rockies is Stu Cole. EY. 
That's why EY is about 30 feet past beyond the first base coaching box. It is outlined on the grass. Fly ball, right field, Trace Thompson going back, and it is gone, a home run. Tony Walters, a two out home run to right, makes it six to four. Rockies a late search. Pitch, a very good pitch to hit. First guy to make contact with the ball, not only did not wind up with the ball, did a face plant on the grass. So you think it's easy to play this game, huh? So Rafael Inoa is the batter now. Dodger prospect. It's a ball outside. One ball, no strikes. We're in the bottom of the ninth. Dodgers six and the Rockies four. There's a call strike to Anoa. One ball, one strike, and two out. Well, Tapia is on deck. The Dodgers would prefer not to see him today. Breaking ball with jelly legs, you know what? <laughs> and it's one and two. West, a powerfully built right-hander. Built very much like Joe Blanton. Big, thick legs. Here's the one, two inside. Two and two. Dodgers with three in the second, three in the third, and been pretty much in cruise control since then. Rockies with three in the eighth and one here in the ninth. Dave Roberts sitting in the bridge chair immediately next to pitching coach Rick Honeycutt. Honeycutt is the only returning coach. As well, he should be 11 years as a pitching coach of the Dodgers, and no team has a lower collective ERA in his time than the Dodgers. You know it takes inside and it's three and two. So West gets the first two batters, strikes him out. Walters hits the home run. Enoa has worked the count full. There's nothing doing in the bullpen. West is gonna finish it up one way or the other. As Enoa fouls it off to the left and out of play. Where we are is about as far a drive as there is for the Dodgers from Glendale to here, about 45 minutes. By way of comparison, when the Dodgers were in Vero Beach, the closest trip was to Port St. Louis, and that was a 45-minute journey. Grounded into the hole and short, Brandon Hicks can't field it cleanly, even if he had probably a hit for Inoa, and the Rockies stay alive. Really sent up in, in, with a Noah running, impossible play to, to make the fielding play to the backhand side and then stop, turn, and throw in time. So an infield hit for Anoa. And here's Ramel Tapia to bat. Well, that's one of the big differences between the Grapefruit League and the Cactus League. It's the proximity of all the teams. Makes it a much more convenient deal to go from one camp to the next. Now with two out, outside and high, one ball, no strikes. Well, initially, they have ruled that as an error. That, that is a tough right. error to get. That There's is. a simple way to field it. Give the official scorer a glove and say, here, you make the play and get him out. Tapia swings and misses, and it's one and one. Oh, 
Our next radio broadcast will be on Thursday with the world champion Kansas City Royals in Glendale. Fouled off to the left and out of play. When next on television, next Friday, the Diamondbacks here at Salt River. One ball, two strikes, two outs. We're in the ninth, and West delivers, and a foul back and out of play. Off the aluminum side again. Again, the one, two, Tapia. Outside and high, two balls and two strikes. Fortunately, it was outside. That was a, a rolling breaking ball that had trouble written on it if it had been a strike. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here's a pitch. Tapia will not go quietly into the good night. Matt West finding out how difficult it is to record oh, that 27th out. Yeah, Tapia did something. Some people may wonder. He was smelling the bat. You foul the ball off, there is a distinct smell of uh, the ball and the friction going off of the bat. And he fouls another one back. This time he doesn't smell the lumber. Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> kind of a smell of a little bit of a burn. The friction between the ball and the bat. Now the 2-2. Grounded slowly up the first baseline. Segadin's got it, steps on the bag. The game is over, and the Dodgers hang on and beat the Colorado Rockies on this Sunday afternoon, six to four. For the Dodgers, six runs, 10 hits, two errors. They left nine men on base. For the Rockies, four runs, eight hits, no errors. They left six. Clayton Kershaw splendid today gets the win. Jordan Lyles takes the loss. Matt West will record the save in a game that took two hours and 53 minutes. So that's a wrap for us from uh, Salt River Fields will return to Sportsnet LA on Friday as the Dodgers face the Diamondbacks right here. First pitch at 110. Rick Monday, Charlie Steiner saying good night and goodbye. And for those of us on the Dodger Radio Network, we're going to take a break. Come right back. Dodgers beat the